now before we start elimination we need to understand two important terminologies that will be used henceforth one will be nucleophilicity and another would be basicity base can be nucleophile nucleophile can be base now this this sounds a bit confusing but actually it is not to understand and to to get to the core of this topic to understand what's the difference between nucleophilicity and basicity let's understand uh, by a simple situation suppose i have chloroethane in my system and i have added a nucleophile let's not be stringent upon what this nucleophile is let's consider this is any nucleophile now this is uh, and we are not concerned about the solvent solvent will not participate in the reaction the solvent is suitable enough to dissolve both of them and allow both of them to react at a considerable rate so there is a solvent we have a cl chloroethane and we have a nucleophile the nucleophile goes for reaction now how is this reaction initiated the reaction is initiated and reaction is nothing but electronic exchange as i have been telling you since long and you must have started to sense this all as well reaction is nothing but electronic exchange there would be some electronic exchange so there will be a reaction now why there will be electronic exchange there would be electronic exchange because this nucleophile is not a stable species this nucleophile is having a charge one extra electron from outer source and this is not potent enough to hold that negative charge in its to hold that electron in its shell because the nucleus is not offering sufficient attraction to that extra electron that have came into that shell from the outer source so this nucleophile the electron would be popping out the electronic wave would be popping out trying to move into some other orbital so this is not stringently hold by the nucleus of this nucleophile so this is unstable unstable means trying to react trying to react means trying to exchange electron so this is electron is not tightly held that's why electron will tend to move to some other orbital so it will be unstable so it will be reactive all right so this nucleophile will start to have electronic exchange because this is not holding this negative charge very tightly all right so this electron will try to go somewhere now where should it go electron always move from orbital to orbital this is in the orbital of nucleus now it will go into the orbital of the substrate in case there is nothing else present now the orbital of substrate will have two kinds of orbitals bonding orbital and anti bonding orbital generally the bonding orbitals are all completely filled we have a empty bond anti bonding orbital now as in case of substitution we have seen electron goes into the anti bonding in case of sn2 so one thing that can happen is this nucleophile if it is very highly unstable it will put its electron somewhere so we don't have any bonding orbital empty here because all the atoms are making bonds to the completely to its uh, valency and there is no bonding orbital left as such empty so in that case what will happen this electron will go into the anti bonding of a carbon to which living group is attached so we will not be discussed i will not be discussing here in a great detail what will happen henceforth because this already we have studied in case of sn2 so what will happen in case of what can happen is this electron will move out to the anti bonding and from the bonding electron have to be released into the orbital of chlorine chlorine will move out this nucleophile will form bond with carbon so the charge of nucleophile is no more there because that electron is being utilized to make bond with this carbon so this nucleophile have got rid of its negative charge which is which it was not capable to hold so since it has got rid of its negative charge and it has made a bond with carbon so it has stabilized since it has been stabilized system has been stabilized so reaction will occur now the negative charge on chlorine in turn has appeared instead of nucleophile now this chlorine have a negative charge which is stable because chlorine is electronegative and chlorine is a bigger atom if the negative charge was more stable on uh, nucleophile rather than chlorine then the reaction will not occur 
A negative charge on chlorine has to be more stable than on nucleophile. Then only the reaction will proceed in this direction. So that the, the negative charge has been lost from nucleophile, but it's developed on chlorine. So overall, if chlorine is more potent to hold this negative charge than nucleophile, then the system would be stabilized, and hence the reaction will occur. So no problem. So the aim is to stabilize the system, and this is how we have stabilized the system, and this is what substitution is. Nucleophile came in, chlorine went out. So this is fair enough. This is good. This is fine. Apart from this, something else also might have occurred, which would have if this kind of substitution or this pathway for stabilization would have not been there if this pathway would have been causing some hindrance to the nucleophile suppose it would have been 3 degree then this electronic transition would have not been possible because this carbon is not attached with, uh, with two hydrogen which are small not offering any repulsion now I have drawn with the marker that nucleophile is far away and still the electron is coming we, have underst we understand this and we have discussed lot many times for electronic transition nucleophile has to come very close to this antibonding electronic transition do not take place with such a great distance so this has to come very close and if there is a bigger atoms attached to carbon then it cannot come very close because of hindrance so this process this initialization of transfer of electron will not take place so suppose if you have 3 degree then SN2 cannot take place and suppose also we have a solvent which is not polar then SN1 can also not take place but still stabilization has to be there because nucleophile cannot retain that negative charge for a very long time then in that case something else can happen what else can happen now as we have been discussing uh, since a long time and this we must be understanding very well now that the bond of hydrogen is a weak bond and that is why this CH bond went for hyperconjugation because the electronic wave in the CH bond is not tightly held because the bond is weak the reason why the bond is weak because hydrogen have only one proton in the nucleus so the attraction offered to this electronic wave is very less so not much of the attraction is formed because the nucleus of hydrogen is a small nucleus of other atoms are big when you have carbon carbon then you have bigger nucleuses so the attraction to the electronic wave in between is higher so the bond is stronger when you have a carbon hydrogen bond then the, the other nucleus becomes too small and that makes the overall attraction very less so the bond is weak all right so this we understand the bond of hydrogen is a weak bond now that this weak bond is used in various cases like in hyperconjugation we have seen that because of weakness this bond is able to participate in hyperconjugation other bonds like CH bond do not participate in hyperconjugation